Okay, so in this video we're going to have a look at working out the surface area of prisms. Now the final question we're going to have a look at is the one shown on the screen, but before we get to this one we're going to have a look at working out the surface area of a cuboid and the surface area of a triangular prism. So with that being said, let's get started. Okay, so this is our first question, and it says work out the total surface area of the cuboid. Now when it comes to a cuboid and we're working out the surface area, we need to remember we are going to work out the area of each individual surface. And when it comes to some of these shapes, you can't always see each of those surfaces. Now if we think about what we can see, we can see that we have the face on the front. And the same face that's on the front, which I've labelled number one, is also on the back. So we're going to have two of those rectangles there for those two surfaces. If we also think about what else we have, we also have the shape here on the right, which is another rectangle. And that is also going to be on the left hand side of the cuboid as well, even though we can't see that one. And for the final shape that we have, we have the rectangle that's shown on the top, and that is face number three, and that is the same as the face on the bottom. So when it comes to a cuboid, we actually have two of each face. And when it comes to a cuboid, we also need to know how to work out the area of a rectangle, as all of these faces are just rectangles. So when we're looking at each one, we just need to identify the side lengths for each individual rectangle, work out their areas, and then we'll combine them all at the end. So if we start with face number one, if we have a look, the width and length in either order is 8 and 10. So to work out that area, we would just do 8 times 10, and that would give us an area of 80, and we will worry about the units at the very end. Now again, that is the same as number 1, so number 1 is also 80, so we can label that for both of them. We're going to then move on to another rectangle, and as I've already labelled it, number 2, we'll start with that green one. So if we look at that one there, the length of that rectangle down the bottom is 5. Now the actual width or the height of this cuboid we can get from the other side and that is a height of 8. So we have a height of 8 centimetres. So to work out that area there we would do 5 times 8. So just make sure that you get those lengths from wherever you need them. So if I write that down that is going to be 8 times 5 which is going to be 40. And that is another one of our areas. Again we can label that with our other side which is also 40. And on to our final one, we've got the rectangle on the top and the bottom. Now again, we're going to have to label both of these, but if we look at the top, we have the area, and let's just get rid of that, we've got 5 down the bottom, and the other, area, oh, the other length is 10 just down here. So if we label that up near our rectangle, this is 10, and this is 5, so to work out the area of number 3, we would do 5 times 10, and that is equal to 50. And again, that is the same as the one down the bottom, which is also 50. So again, you might have noticed that in all of these multiplications that we've done to work out in each individual area, each one has a different pair of numbers because all of the lengths on the cuboid were different numbers. So for the, top, for the middle one there, the front face, we had eight times 10. For the side, we had eight times five. And then for the top, we had five times 10. So it's up to you in terms of which process that you do. When it comes to a cuboid, what you can do is just work out the area of each individual face, the three that we worked out. You can add them all together and then double your answer. Or you can obviously work out all of the individual faces, even though there are matching pairs, and then add them all together. So completely up to you. But if we go ahead and add them together now, we have 80 and 80. We then also have our green face that we worked out, which is 40 and 40, and then our final two, we have 50 and 50. And all we need to do is add all of those together, so let's add them all up. So we've got 80 plus 80, which is 160, plus 40 gets us to 200, plus the other 40 gets us to 240, and then we've got an extra 100 there, which is 340 in total. And now we want to give our units, it was in centimetres, and we're looking at an area, so it's centimetres squared. So our final answer for this question would be 340 centimetres squared. Right, so let's have a quick look at a question for you to have a go at. 
Okay, so here's a very similar question for you to have a go at, just working out the total surface area of the cuboid. So pause the video there, have a go at working this one out, and we'll go over the answer in just a sec. Okay, so for the front face then, we've got 5 and we have 3. So that is an area of 15. Again, the same on the back. For the side face, we've got 3 times 4, which is 12. And for the top face, it would be 5 times 4, as this is 5 and this is 4, and that would give us an area of 20. So again, completely up to you which method you chose here. You could add those three numbers up and double them, or we can double them and add them up. So if we double the 20, we would have 40. Let's have a look. So 2 times 20 will be 40. We've got 2 times the 12, which is 24. And we've got two lots of the 15, which is equal to 30. And now we can add all of those together. 40 and 30 is 70, plus the 24 is 94. And our units would be centimetres squared. So the final answer we should have got for the surface area of this cuboid is 94 centimetres squared. OK, so that's looking at a cuboid. Let's have a look at a triangular prism. OK, so when it comes to a triangular prism, obviously we also have a triangular face now. So we've not just got rectangles involved, we're also going to have to look at these triangles. So if we label up the faces that we have, we have one triangle at the front, and we also have another triangle at the back. So that is going to be number one, and that is the same face on the front and the back. We also have this slanted length, which is going downwards. It's kind of difficult to label them, obviously because we have uh, a see-through shape here. So we've got number two, which is the front uh, rectangle there, sloping downwards. We also have the one on the back, which is another rectangle, and we'll call that face number three. And we actually have one more, and let's label that with another colour, and that is the one on the bottom, and that is face number four. So one and one, they have two triangles, and then we have rectangle two, rectangle three, and rectangle four. Again, you can work these out in any order, but just so we can actually see them. So for number one, for the triangle, let's work that out. So to work out the area of a triangle, you have to do base times height divided by 2. So that is going to be 6 times 8, and then divide our answer by 2. Or, of course, you could halve the base and then times it by 8. So that comes out as an answer of 24. Now, not forgetting, we also have two of those. So if we do 2 times 24 straight away, to take into account that we have our two triangles, that's going to give us an area of 48 for our triangles. We can then move on to one of the rectangles, so let's go with number two, and let's just get the side lengths. So for that particular rectangle, we have 10 going down the slanted length there, and we have nine down the bottom. So to work out the area of that, we would do nine times 10, and that gives us an area of 90. So now we've got our area of 90, let's write that down as well, and that one's finished. Now we can move on to our next rectangle, and that is the rectangle on the back. The rectangle on the back has a bottom length of 9, as you can see already highlighted, and it has a height of 8. So for that one there, we would do 8 times 9, which gives us an area for that one of 72. So now we've got that one as well, we can label that, so number 3 is 72, and that's another area done. And then moving on to our last one, we have the length along the bottom. Again, that uses the length of 9, and it has a width of 6. So for that one there, we can label this one, and we can do 6 times 9. There we go, which comes out as 54. And that is our final area. So for number 4 there, we have an area of 54. Right, so we've got all of our areas. All we need to do is add them together. So if we put them all together, we have 48, we have 90, we have 72, and we have 54. And we just need to add them all up. Be very careful when you do this. So that adds up to 14. And then we've got 13, 25, 26. So that comes out as 264. So my final answer would be 264 centimetres squared. And that would be the surface area of this triangular prism. So obviously just a little bit more to think about there because we had the triangular face. And then we also had three different rectangles for this particular prism. So let's have a look at a question for you to have a go at. Okay, so here's another triangular prism. So pause the video here, have a go at working this one out, and we'll go over the answer in just a sec. Right, okay, so we have our triangle, which is on the front and the back, and we'll work that one out first. So for the first one there, we've got a base and height of 3 and 4, 
So we have three times four divided by two, and that is equal to six. Again, we've got two of those faces, so straight away let's do two times six, and we get an answer of 12. Now we move on to our next face, and let's work out the area of this slanted rectangle. So that is number two, and the lengths for that we have seven and five. So seven times five is equal to 35. So the area of that was 35, and we can label that to the side. And then let's move on to our next one. We can go for this back rectangle, let's call that face number three. And for that one there, we've got the seven again, but that is gonna be multiplied by the three. So that is gonna be seven times three, which is 21. And again, we can label that as face number three. And then we've just got one left to do, and that is the face on the bottom. Again, that is going to use the seven, but we're gonna multiply that by the four. So the four is the other length of that rectangle, and we would do seven times four, which is 28. And again, we'll just label that all to the side, and that is 28. Now we just need to finish this off, and that is just adding them all together. So we have 12, we have 35, we have 21, and we have 28. And if we add those all together, that adds up to 16, and then we have four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So 96 centimeters squared. And that is the final answer for the surface area of this triangular prism. Okay, so that is the main two that we're going to have a look at, looking at cuboids and triangular prisms. But as I showed you at the start, we've got a bit of a challenge question for you to have a go at. So let's have a look at that one now. Okay, so this question says work out the total surface area of the L-shaped prism. Now this is a particularly difficult question because we have a compound shape to work out the area of on the front. We then also have lots of rectangles moving around the shape. We have this rectangle here, we've got this rectangle, this rectangle, this rectangle, we've got the one on the bottom, which we could call number four or number five now, and we have the one on the back, which we could call number six. And then not forgetting as well, as we already mentioned, you have the shape on the front and also the shape on the back. Okay, so there's a lot of different shapes here to work out the area of, and you're gonna to have to work out the area of all of them. So pause the video, draw this shape as best as you can, and have a go at working it out, and we'll go over the answer in just a sec. Right, okay, let's have a go at working this out then. So let's start with the front face. Now this one here, you have to split this up into two different rectangles. And if we split it up, and you could go down or across, then we get an area of four for this one here, using the length of four and the length of one, and for the area on the left, we have one times three, which gives us an area of three. Now overall, that gives us a total area of seven. So we can get rid of all of this, and we could just say that has an area of seven. And again, that's gonna be the same on the back. So if we call that face number one, and we want two of those, then we're going to have two times seven. And that gives us a total area of 14. We can then go about working out some of the other rectangles. I'm gonna start with the ones that we can see. Now let's not forget that the, the length of all of these, or the depth of the shape, is six on all of these lines, and that's going to help us with working it out. Now the top one, if we start with that, we've got one multiplied by the length of six. So this one on the top here is six, and we can label that as face number two. So for face number two, we have an area of six. If we move on to this one for face number three, and that there, we actually need to know this height. So in order to get that height, let's look at the total height of the shape, which is three, and we've got part of the height over here, which is one. So that height there must be two. That now allows us to work it out because we can do two times the depth of six, which gives us an area of 12. So for face number three, we have an area of 12. Moving on to the next one, and let's just get rid of some of these highlighted parts. Let's call this one face number four. So that there has a length of four and that depth of six. So to work that one out, we would do four times six, which is equal to 24. So we've got face number four, which is 24. Now we're almost there, we've got a few left to do. And let's have a look at this last one that we can see, and that is number five. And that has a height of one and a depth of six. So that as well has got an area of six. Again, you could write down one times six, but that one's quite a nice one to do. So for shape number five, we've got the area of six. 
and now we just have the two that we can't see. So we've got the one on the back, let's call that face number seven, and that is going to be the height, which is three, again times the depth, which is six, so three times six, which is equal to 18. And again, that's going to be one of those ones that we couldn't see, so we'll label that as 18, and then in fact, that should have been face number six, not face number seven. So let's just relabel that face number six, because face number seven is the last one here on the bottom that we can't see as well. And seven there, again, is going to be the final two, this five multiplied by this six, and that is five times six, which is equal to 30. And that's our final face, number seven, and that has an area of 30. So now we just need to add together all of those numbers. Again, there was quite a lot there, but we had lots of faces and we've managed to work them all out. So 14 plus six is 20. If we just go down our list, 14 plus six is 20, plus the 12 is 32, plus the 24 is 56, plus the six is 62, plus the 18 is 80, and plus the 30 gets us to 110. So our final answer for this one is 110 centimeters squared and that is the surface area of this l-shaped prism right there we go so a bit of a challenge question to finish hopefully you managed to get some of that done hopefully you didn't miss any of the faces and hopefully you found that video useful and helpful if you did please like the video please drop me a comment let me know how you've got on don't forget to subscribe to the channel and until next time i will see you for the next video